So, welcome to another episode of Super J Recap. Uh, I'm Kyle. I am joined by, from, you know, so, from so far away, literally, you know, downstairs. Yeah. Uh, Shane, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Shane. Um, so, I, I basically forced Shane to watch the Super J A Cup 1995. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was there was a uh, wrestling question mark. I mean, one of them was a wrestling match. That's true. One was a wrestling match. The other one, I think it's debatable. Yep. So so the so the match we're talking about this episode is Grand Naniwa taking on Damien Six Six Six. So Grand Nami Namiwa is is Crab Boy, right? Yes, he was he was the crab master of the sea, whatever. He's supposed Which to be. Which means Damien, Damien six 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 then is not Vampiro. Yes, he is not Vampiro. I think he might have been at one point in a stable with Vampiro, so you weren't far off. Uh, but yeah, so Grand Naniwa was representing Michinoku Pro Wrestling in this tournament, and Damien six 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 was representing FMW. Which is ironic because he would never work for FMW again after this show. Um, and this was December 13th, 1995. The entire 1995 Super J Cup took place on the same night. Uh, so what were your kind of overall thoughts of the first match we watched? Um, so it was, it felt longer than it was. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of, um, the crowd liked them both. The yes. crowd was cheering a lot. They, they were, they were doing chanting. There were cheers. I didn't get why, so they must have been big, respectively at the time. Uh, even though it's two guys that I haven't heard of now, not not that I've heard of every Japanese wrestler, but I've, I, I do okay. I, I know yeah. a decent amount. Um, Crab Boy definitely. It, it was weird. Crab Boy seemed like he was in better. Seemed like he was in much better shape. Um, but it was not Vampiro that was doing most of the bumping and most of the wrestling honestly but i think that has to do with the fact that everything took place in one night and so crab boy's probably keeping some of you know trying to stay calm for this match so he can do a lot more later on uh yeah he's got to wrestle liger later on so he uh, that would explain it that would explain it yep uh but you know it it was a lot of it was it was a good opening match though like because like you said both of them were kind of crowd favorites they weren't gonna show you anything super spectacular but you know there were a lot of posing and a lot of you know a couple quick high spots and like just enough to keep you interested but not enough to like blow away the rest of the show for sure i mean obviously it wasn't a good opening match for me because i didn't know who either of them were but by yeah. the fact that the crowd obviously did and we're obviously getting excited by it. It worked for what it was needed to do. Yep. Um, and Damien six six six, like he ended up doing like a sharpshooter, um, and then like big chops into the corner and Kawada kicks, kicks, and then uh, Damien six 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 did the rope walk. Which yeah, was... I was about to say he was he was doing the uh, um, old school, but he was doing the the yeah the you know, pr yeah the, the praying um, more of the. Uh, uh, Shinsuke Shinzaki rope walk as opposed to the Undertaker rope walk. Uh, I mean, he did the rope walk into an arm drag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which would have definitely been more... Rope walk at that point. Yeah, so that would have been more the Shinzaki style. Um, but, you know, missed a moonsault. Uh, Naniwa then hits the Hurricane Rana for the win kind of out of nowhere you know like you said this was an okay but not really spectacular like it kind of was just there and yeah. you know i don't like especially covering them for for this sort of project like i don't like that type of match for this and it's like oh you know this could have been so much better I just I blame the fact that it's all in one night. I mean, people have to save themselves. They really don't want to go all out for those early matches, uh, especially if they know they've got some big matches like Liger. If they've got big matches later, so which is why I feel in both of the first two matches, uh, 
the the guy that that lost was doing most of the offense, doing most of the taking most of the bumps, like doing most everything in both of these matches just to kind of preserve the energy of the other two guys. Yep. Which uh, sucks when you have everything on in one night. That that it 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 sucks when you go back to look at it. Maybe in one night it's fine, but yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, you definitely see where it's going. But then again, even even in like modern New Japan, you can see, you know, even as they're doing the the New Japan Cup as we're recording this, um, the guy who loses gets a lot more of the offense because he's got to. You know he's got to look good and won't have another opportunity later on. Yeah, um, that's true. So, uh, in each of these episodes, we're going to also be covering the fact that you know what happened to the loser, um, in an as yet unnamed segment. Um, Where are they now? They're having themselves a good time. They're fighting them all. <laughs> you can uh, just cut that and use it forever. Yeah. So, so Damien666 was the one that was eliminated. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he was representing FMW as he even had the, the logo on his back uh, and all that. Uh, but he would never work for FMW again after this uh, because he would actually keep working for War. Um, he would keep working for War, which was the host promotion. Um, and then have a short, very short stint in W in ECW, and then basically was in WCW doing worldwide and random stuff going forward, um, and then did short stints in XPW, uh, and now uh, works for the Crash in Mexico. Um, up until Dave Matthews' favorite promotion uh, is run by Conan. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's Con it's Conan's promotion in Mexico. He was with AAA for a long time, wasn't he? And then he split off to do Crash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so and the same same with Damien was he he was working for AAA, and then I think as Conan moved to do the Crash, Damien went with him, and Damien and I believe his son Bestia uh, are now a tag team, uh, moving forward. So thank God he's still wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he was so great in 1995. Um, but but he stuck he stuck around with War. Yeah, he stuck around with War for a for a couple years and then uh, started doing job matches for WCW. War, uh, yep. yeah. What is it? Good I for? mean, it's better it's better that they just went with the initials instead of wrestling and romance. I I expected more romance in both of these matches. Well, there was this, some in the first one, but at this point they were wrestling Association R. Oh, got it. Just because they really liked the letters, and you know, they didn't know what to do with didn't it. Didn't know what to do with the R. <laughs> uh, so thanks for listening to, uh, and watching this episode. Uh, you can find me at Knocked Out Films in, on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, check out all the stuff at knockedoutentertainment.com. Shane, do you have anything you want to plug? Um. I sometimes do podcasts, uh, sometimes not. Um, so fantasy hangover for football, which might not happen this year because there might not be football this year. Uh, and uh, character work for comedy, um, which might not happen this year because maybe I won't be in the same room with that with with that gentleman for long periods of time enough to, to record some stuff. But uh, check those out if, if you haven't. There's some there's definitely episodes out there on SoundCloud. Listen to them. Yep, and I'll, Stitcher. You can get us on Stitcher. Yep, and I'll link and I'll link it in the in the video description. So, thanks for watching.